Just a few years ago, the idea of bots was crazy. Tesla was mocked widely for jumping into a field that nobody cares about and nobody will because it's 20 years old and nobody cares yet. And yet here we are, we're seeing a lot of big projects, startups making huge progress and funding is arriving even for the little players. So I went ahead and asked uh, John Twig to join us again. John is a software developer who understands a lot of the implications behind the bot and I tricked him into joining us so that we could have another conversation. I should mention, I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. John, how are you? I'm John. And thank you for having me back. I'm surprised that you wanted me back, but here we are. I know, uh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so uh you know that Boston Dynamics has been around forever. You know that uh, that adorable little uh, Honda bot, uh, what was his name, uh, Asimo, was, has been around forever. But there were bits of technology that were missing that made them less viable. Specifically, they didn't have brains. They could function well on rails, but once you stop, once they run out of the coded parameters, they're useless. And in many cases, just fall off the stage in the middle of a demo. Let's try to avoid that. And then uh, we saw Volkswagen get into their uh, bot thing. And today's news, and when I say today, I mean the day that this was recorded, Brett Adcock shared, excited to share, figure has raised $675 million at a $2.6 billion valuation. OpenAI and Figure signed a collaboration agreement to develop next-gen AI models for robotics. And here's the details. This is a big deal, isn't it? This is a big deal. I think the, the main thing it shows is everybody's starting to say, take this seriously. Uh, everybody's starting to realize what this is going to mean. And the, the fear of missing out uh, is, is going to be building. Because if you're manufacturing and you don't get the bots going, uh, we already know that Tesla can make a car in half the time, at least, of, or is it a third of Volkswagen? When we look at the unboxed, it's going to come down again. That will include the, the bots as part of the process. So the process of the uh, old manufacturers losing ground is just going to accelerate. It's, it's, where do they go if they don't do this fast enough? They're going to be even more trapped than they are now. Well, and are we talking random clowns on the street investing, or are we talking the investments were from Microsoft, OpenAI Startup Fund, NVIDIA, Jeff Bezos through Bezos Expeditions, Parkway Venture Capitals, Intel Capital, and Align Ventures. These are big, real, serious players looking at the figure robot and saying, you know what, uh, this is on the right track. So... And <clears throat> the biggest name is not on that list. Which is? The Chinese government. As we know, they announced a few months ago, they're making it a national priority and they're going to throw money at anybody in China that's making robots. What, what they're starting to recognize is, as Elon says, this changes the nature of the economic system. It's going to be much, much bigger. And if we look at power in the world, economic power, it depends on the size of your economy. If Tesla and other US companies start to dom dominate robots and the US economy and the Western economies get much bigger, then uh, China will be left behind. So this really is a race. Uh, we're going to see a lot of money in a lot of different companies uh, very quickly next few months. If, if we thought the baby boom crunch with uh, falling birth rates in the US was bad, it is nothing compared to the fertility cliff in China, where even since relaxing uh, reproductive policies, they found that their population is shrinking and it is absolutely aging. And they will have, in the foreseeable future, a labor shortage if there are no bots. And if we look further at Brad Adcock's series here, we can see that uh, what, what will it be for? AI training, manufacturing, deploying more of itself, expanding engineering headcount, advanced commercial deployment efforts. Uh, so this is this is a big deal. Oh, I guess the funding is for deploying more robots, but that's what this is going to be, is robots building robots at some point. Um, and their robot is, for a prototype, 
it's smooth. It's, I'm impressed. Yeah, if we look at the fertility rate I've just read this morning, literally of South Korea, it's 0.92, uh, which means that the Korean population will get very old very quickly and very few young people. So we're going to need robots. I mean, in the UK, we've already got labor shortages in many areas that are invisible. The care sector for elderly people is is massively underfunded. I don't know what it's like over there in the US, but in the UK, uh, care companies are going bust all over the place. Uh, the care they provide isn't good, it's rushed. That's just going to get worse. So the bots will potentially save the day. And there are a lot of jobs that forget humans not wanting to do. There are a lot of jobs that humans should not do. Cleaning up any biohazard is a job best left to bots. And the bot needs to be able to recognize what is, you know, what is a dirty needle? What is a uh, jagged piece of glass? It needs to be able to do that on the fly. And this is one solution. They could be deployed to the bottom of the ocean where they pick up trash that has sunk uh, beneath the waves and is destroying life out of sight. And to say nothing about building a moon base or a Mars base, because they could be, <laughs> if they work, uh, they're easy to test, deploy them in Alaska and let them build something in the middle of nowhere. Did it work or not? There's your answer. And of course, initially, we're going to get the bots doing the jobs that people, they pay the most for those jobs in manufacturing cars, etc. But over time, that will get cheaper and cheaper as they get more volume built. And there are not just dangerous jobs, there are jobs that are not economic. They don't get done because nobody can afford to do them in areas across the whole of the economy, whether it be picking up litter or looking after the parks. Just today, we've heard news in the UK again that this local councils are having to pull back even further on the services for the local parks. And of course, what will society look like if we don't look after our green spaces? There are so many things that contribute to human well-being that simply don't get done because they're not economically viable and who wants to pay for them? It gets us back to the old debate about taxes versus uh, central government. But the answer, of course, is always a mixture of the two. Yeah. And that's uh, now that you mention it, there are, you know, we have a program called Adopt a Highway uh, Litter Program. And there are, are stretches of road that have not been adopted and they do not look the same. Uh, for the most part, our interstates are quite pristine, um, but it's expensive and labor is only getting more expensive. In many states, minimum wage is no longer the $7.25. In my state, it's over $16 an hour. Um, as a result, you get awfully good service everywhere you go. The employees at Walmart do not feel like they are uh, escaped mental patients. They feel like they are people who value their job because they know that uh, it's actually giving them the ability to live. And even at those wages, we still have a labor shortage. Even at $16 plus, there's a, a labor shortage. And it's what happens when you eliminate those entry-level jobs. We saw this uh, during the lockdown, a lot of uh, older workers chose to retire. They said, you know what, this it's fine. This is close enough. And they're out. And everybody moved up one rung. And then they found nobody wants to work anymore. No, the entry level jobs, it's not that they don't want them. They never wanted them. They now have the luxury of being able to move up one spot. And there's nobody left for that bottom spot, which is a mixed blessing because it was always a terrible job. And it's one that's ripe for automation in many cases. And it's, uh, and that's what we're seeing. There's a, a, a tremendous shortage of contractors for home building and repair. And the ones you can find are not affordable. My gosh, I'll tell you, because I've got a very old house and it needs quite a bit of work. And, uh, because my neighborhood looks nice. It's very hard to find contractors uh, willing to work for less than it would cost me to create my own business and hire my own crew and then dissolve the business when the project's done. That's a little bit of business tip there is uh, try to make your quote less than it would cost for someone to become a contractor. It's just my thought. 
and we've actually had a bit of a practice run here in the UK. Uh, I'm not, sure I ought to say the, not sure I ought to say the word, but Brexit. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched a TV programme a few years ago because a lot of people say all those European workers, they don't, they're not, they work for less. They're taking jobs from British people. Well, this TV programme uh, invited British people to apply for jobs and come and work in restaurants, various different jobs, but they didn't turn up or they didn't last long. They'd already gone up that rung as European workers were coming doing some of the seasonal work that wasn't really attractive to British people. So Brexit it shifted the nature of those jobs. And we're going to see that in a much bigger scale with bots, of course, uh, because there'll be far more of them, millions, if not hundreds of millions. So yeah, interesting times. There's a, a United Farm Workers or someone like that, where they were pushing a few years back for uh, relaxing of some of these uh, migrant worker rules to allow migrant workers to actually come in and do the work and also leave without fear that they would never be able to come back. And the program that they did, and I think they were doing it every year, is we will pay you 20 bucks an hour to come out and pick apples, pick tomatoes, whatever it is. And if you really think these people are taking your jobs, come out and work 20 bucks an hour, come do it. And they said the longest any gringo lasted was lunch. So that's, and a lot would leave within the first hour because it is grueling, backbreaking work. And it's not about the money. There are jobs for which you couldn't pay me a hundred bucks an hour to do. And, uh, or I'm, or I'm physically incapable of doing. So those are good ones for bots. There are, there are, Types of agriculture that require a delicate touch that today's robots may not have, but tomorrow's robots may. And for that matter, send them out to, to reforest uh, the Amazon or stop the work on the uh, Saharan uh, Greenbelt project that's trying to hold the desert back. Those are all things that are funding limited, but also manpower limited. This is an exciting future. And the point of this video is that the funding is there. The products are good enough. We are at a convergence of technology where we're no longer bound by you, you know, Boston Dynamics proved you can build great equipment, but without QR codes, it, it would need the AI and the AI just wasn't, didn't exist is I guess what I would say. What would be your take on that? Absolutely. And, and while you're talking, I'm thinking about health. So many of those workers doing those really difficult jobs, it's not good for the health in the long term, bad backs, all sorts of things. Bots are going to be massively better. So we've got also m many benefits in the long term in terms of health care costs, all sorts of things. But yes, we really are coming to a massive convergence where we've seen Tesla say that they couldn't get the actuators for the bot. They've had to build new ones. But if we look at the software they used for that, they've built their own software using AI to do that. So the AI is not just talking about the mental capacity, it's actually helping us build the machines that build the machines, that build new materials, all converging. And of course, that's before we start talking about energy and talking about the, the roads being adopted. If, if we've got free energy and we've got boring company tunnels, we could actually rewild the surface and, and make it massively healthier for, for people. Yes, I believe that once uh, things like Beyond Meat and Impossible Burgers get cheaper or even just to price parity with agriculture, with with actual meat, that there are people who will switch, especially young people. It might be a generational shift where the it, where the college kids are the ones buying it because it's a little bit cheaper and then they just stick with it. But think of all the water used in, uh, in cattle ranching, all the land that can be given back to nature. This is a net win for everybody. And I know we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. We're dreaming a bit, but this dream couldn't five years ago, if we were talking about this, we'd say, yeah, maybe in a hundred years. And now we're saying maybe in five or 10 years, it's much more real because the pieces are falling together. I would say on the software front, oh, did you have something on that? I was just going to say that that's a really good case of the social change, but in the farming case and growing food, there's an added complication that when we've seen uh, 
various companies that rented out films all those years ago, go bust or Kodak with the, the cameras, we might, obviously, when those things go, we're going to get farmers going out of business and having to do new jobs. But the slight complication there is we don't want to just give the land up to chaos. It's still going to need managing. So, but who's going to pay for that? So that's one of the really interesting points that the whole of society will shift and we're going to have to reopen maybe the bot tax that CERN talks about a lot or however and perhaps government gets a bit bigger and does more of those things that need doing but there's going to be a process of adjustment over the next 10 20 30 years that is going to move very quickly and be fascinating and my only fear there is that legislation tends to be very slow to react and technology tends to move very quickly that's why we saw things like uh decades it took to crack down on robocalls and decades it wasn't until members of congress themselves had to use email themselves that they cracked down on spam it's insane uh yeah and then the the big advantage tesla has isn't just that they can manufacture it isn't just that they attract the best engineering graduates in the world it is also as they showed it i think it was ai day one when they they use their own crash test software to simulate crashes of the bot because we have the software and we need the data we could overbuild it but that'd be that'd be a waste of time and money let's build it exactly any engineer can build a bridge that doesn't fall a good engineer can build one that just barely doesn't fall and that's where manufacturability comes in so and that that's really fascinating in terms of the tunnels that's a whole nother subject because it gets quite complicated lots of but a tunnel shuttle will not crash there's one tunnel going in one direction there will be no accidents so you don't need to there is not going to be a tree fall on your glass roof a right. boring company shuttle can be a lot lighter that means right. a smaller battery it doesn't need to accelerate and brake quickly. You've got an endless stream of reasons why Tesla could build an extremely efficient boring company shuttle that would probably be 10 times as efficient as a car on the surface with all the different added. So yeah, Ooh. it compounds Ooh. all over the place. Oh, I might have to bring you back to have a chat about that one because that's a that's a neat topic. And a lot of there's a lot of myths and misunderstandings about boring company that drive me a little crazy. I yeah. Do not suffer fools gladly. So guys, so guys, yeah, yeah. You invented a train, but worse. No, yeah. it's not a train. It's different. It's different. So what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, in the comments, should I bring John back to talk about other topics, including uh, some ideas on the boring tunnel? Or should I just bring him back for robots? Or should I send him packing because he knows what he did? I don't, but maybe he does. So leave it in the comments. We got to know. That's how we figure out what to do next. The video is where I hope to make you guys smarter. And the comments is where I hope you will make me smarter. And I appreciate it. Everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual things, and stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.